Yes, right? Exactly. That I always love when it's like authentic, right? Instead of like a pre-watch thing and I'm like like over the line drastic, it's a good thing I'm not, you know, trying to be an an actor. Um, By the way, I know we're going to focus on Mega Man 2, but hats off on the War Plus World Record. I know that took a ton of work. Oh my god. And right? hard work always pays off in the end, so oh, congrats. Yeah. When when you uh, finally broke your record after so long, when you took it back from Elo, um, you let off a ton of expressions, and I think I told you before that it's just like it, it's inspiring um, watching the way you reacted because you have been speedrunning this game for also a very long time too, so you understand the weight on your shoulders, like what it what it means to be like strung down by um, what you're able to do and what you have not achieved yet, and it's massively inspiring to see that. Um. You know, I took I took a long break, and then I, I feel like I never really achieved what I wanted to, to achieve with this game. But when I came back, I was like I was set on achieving it. And um, to achieve the record on that show, the chase for the record, which no one had ever done before, right. it was like such a huge firestorm of emotions when right. I got that run. It was it was crazy. I was insane. when when you woke up that day before, and uh, so everyone in chat knows the record we're watching is not the record we're talking about. Just just to keep you guys informed, he actually beat it again. But when you woke up that day, you knew you had to do Chase the Record. You also, you told yourself too, you're like, you know what, I'm, I kind of, like, I don't have time for this. I can't put in the emotion and the time anymore for these speedruns, right? You, you were, yeah, told it was yourself that, that And, um, yeah, I, you know, I've got real life stuff going on right now, but, uh, I, I, I was setting that as my last day to grind for the record. Like, that Chase for the Record stream was my last chance to get the record, uh, at that moment. And, now, um, and was unbelievable what were your what were your doubts do you think were you like were you like even though you set yourself on the last stream which is a very risky thing to do i think in my opinion like if i told myself you know february 13th man i have to have the record by then like that's such a um that's so much pressure on yourself when you woke up that day were you like did you think you were gonna get it were you like i i have to get it today today's the day no that's like, insane i i put in 11 hour grind days the weekend before and i i didn't get it on those three days friday saturday sunday and then Chase for the Record was the next Tuesday. So I didn't get it then. I was like, how am I going to get it on a high pressure, like 2,000 people watching, three hour session, um, where it's like the, the, the highest pressure stage for trying to get a world record? How am I possibly going to do it then? So I mentally, I had like, I had sort of accepted that, you know, I wasn't going to get the record at this time. I'll come mm -hmm. back later and I'll do it then. But I still gave it. 110 percent during the stream i that, that was the most focused i've ever been while playing video games ever in my life insane and then what and yeah. you're referring to that during that run right or just that day during, during that stream yeah Dur okay. during that stream uh okay. like once the stream so we did an introductory race and then once the race ended i immediately uh, reset the game and i started going into runs and i was like all right this is it i have three hours i need to i need to crush it here and yeah. i just went into I went to gamer mode. <laughs> full in, full in gamer mode. Chat minimized or you know taken away, whatever. Yeah. All like, I find that with speedrunning sometimes um, surroundings can be a very big influence on your speedrun. Like if I see my cat move for some reason, it just like affects. I don't know why, right? If a cord's touching my leg, I just become so aware of it. Did you zone yes. all of that out perfectly? Yeah, cord touching your leg, dude. That I. I... I always, uh, I now, like, make sure that my physical surroundings are basically just perfect. So right. there, there's no possible distractions. Um, there's no, like, fuzzballs touching my arm off my chair or anything like right. that. Environment. Dude, it's so true. Like, it, my, my feet can't touch, like, my little my little table under my desk here where yeah. I have my systems on. If it touches it, I become aware. And, you know, I'm thinking about, like, my toenails or, like, you know what I mean? Like, any, anything like that is just, it's... It's annoying how speedrun has those traits to it, but the the concentration is just insane. But aside from that, I have this video started at zero 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 zero. Do you also have it started? Yeah. Uh, where's a good place to put my uh, my webcam? Top right corner, do you think? Um. Yeah, I guess so. Okay. I just want to make fine. sure. I don't know the the ins and outs of this game, so we're gonna go ahead and start. Do you do you reset once or? Tw yeah, it looks like you're gonna have a reset, which is good good introduction yeah I, there's no extra downtime at the start of the bod right on okay so we're gonna go ahead and start in three two one and then on go and then the, the floor is yours please tell me tell me what okay three two one oh go. yeah go ahead yep 
So uh, this was a failed attempt, and then uh, this is the record starting right here. And so uh, you might be confused about what's Rockman 2. Well, it's the Japanese version of Mega Man 2. Uh, Mega Man is known as Rockman in Japan. And um, hold on a second. Okay, so um, Mega Man 2, uh, or Rockman 2 rather, is equivalent to the difficult mode of U.S. version Mega Man 2. Yeah. Now, uh, we start off with Flashman stage because we want to acquire the three items the game has. Uh, there's item 1, item 2, and item 3, and all of them are used to set up zips. Zips save a lot of time. And so we go to Flashman stage right away because the other two items can't really be used to save that much time in Flashman stage, and Flashman also dies to the standard buster shot very, very quickly. Tends to start with him first. Right on. And... Uh, yeah, so there's not that much happening in this stage. Uh, we have the tin can tower here. I actually um, <laughs> messed that up a little bit because I didn't shoot his hitbox coming down on that fall. You have actually only two frames to hit him there. It looks super um, precise, though. Like, that that looks like a hard, like, you got to jump through the cans, right? So uh, you have to hit him on the way down, and then you also have to, to do these weaving jumps in between his cans. He's, like, throwing his cans at you as you yeah. hit him. This fight so is that insane, me, like, also there but uh the rest of the stage is good this fight this fight's very complicated when you're learning this fight um it takes a long time to be able to get because you need to learn this fight incrementally there's the first half sort of where he's coming at you and mm -hmm. then the second half is where you're like you're jumping away from him but you're also turning back to shoot him constantly That's and so it's like insane. it's a very precise dance it, it, it's really cool because it looks really impressive to new viewers um, but for us, like, I, I get that fight actually, like, 95% of the time, I'd say. Oh, yeah. You guys, you guys kill it. That's crazy. So now, this, good... so this stage gives you the item three? Item three, and it's gonna be used right away in Heatman stage. Oh, yeah, it is. That's um, right. um, now, good thing about Rockman 2, and the reason that we all run on this version, is because... These, these cutscenes where you're getting these items in between stages are much shorter on the Japanese version. Nice, okay. So it's also a faster version as well. Alright, so we're starting He-Man here. This, this stage has more going on than the Flashman stage. Uh, still not the most interesting stage. But uh, we have a trick near the end of the screen. Um, I don't think it has really an official name. It's just you throw an item 3, and you have to land it on this one tile uh, wall, basically. It's like um, the edge of a, a ledge. And you need to land it on that, and then you jump onto it. It saves about two seconds. Oh my gosh. That looks so, like, then, so perfect, though. Yeah, this game has precise stuff all over. Mm -hmm. Now, this is, this is the first zip coming up. So I'm going to try to explain zips a little bit. I set up the item three there. And now, the game doesn't check if Mega Man is entering the ceiling. It checks for the item three's position in relation to the ceiling. And so uh, the item, three pos item three's position is good there. It pushes Mega Man into the ceiling. And then what you want to do is you want to jump and then press left somewhere around four frames after jumping. And then Mega Man will stay in the same horizontal position, but then he'll be facing left. Once he's facing left inside a wall, he'll start zipping to the right. Uh, one tile per frame, which is really, really fast. That is very fast. And then I went over the, the heat block section there, the disappearing blocks. Uh, just to note there, it's dangerous when you're trying to go that fast uh you want to land on the next block as soon as as soon as it spawns because yeah. um the next blocks their their timers to start um to spawn start as soon as they're scrolled on screen cool. and so by doing one block faster it speeds up the next blocks all these little knickknacks yeah yeah i'm, I'm going really deep here we're, we're in it's the lab good. right here it's good <laughs> yeah uh now the heatman fight is the by far the biggest uh, RNG point of the run. Um, he can, every time he's hit, he takes 30, 60, or 90 frames to start uh, charging at you. And you want, um, you know, as many 30 frame charges as possible. I think I got decent luck here. Now, before you get any deeper, ever. have you ever gotten all 30s before? No, no one ever has uh, in a run. Okay. Now, Most how much... Ever... Yeah, go ahead. How much time save would it, would it be compared to a normal, say, this 0.7 the 419 compared to if you would have got all 30s here what would your time save have been um here if i had gotten all 30s it probably would have been a 413 oh or 414 God. split That's so much time yeah. wow yeah but a you're happy about the time save swing. yeah 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 
Uh, so this is a decent run starting out here, but there's a 13 second um, difference between the slowest possible and the fastest possible heat man patterns. Right on. This, so you're, you're happy right now. Yeah, yeah, this is good. Uh, this stage is a crowd pleaser. I, you know, I, I'm not really going to explain that much about this stage. I'll just let it do the talking itself. Right on. So in that in that case, then you and I can uh, talk about a couple things. Now, at this point, you're you're pretty standard in a run right now, right? You're like, um, okay, so hopefully Airman works now. Obviously, this is pretty trivial at times, right? Um, What's it's not trivial? Uh, Airman. It's not always easy, right? Like, the, the better player you are, the easier it's going to be. So this is... These tricks are obviously hard for new players, right? I call the open air section trivial. If you're going for the strat that I went for, um, mm -hmm. that just happened. It's still like I expect to get it, but um, it's definitely not easy at all. Okay. Like landing on the lips of those platforms of those uh, cloud dudes. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I think there's about three to four pixels surrounding oh, either on, on either side of him. So definitely not, guys. Definitely not. <laughs> But it's um, there's there's two different ways to do that, right? There's um, what what some people call a granny strat. That's kind of kind of makes it a little bit easier. Yeah. Okay, and that's using uh, strat for races and for um, you know newer players who want to be more consistent on the air stage before they that's start going for the using Flashman, right? Well, so there's two different components of like the start of Airman. Um, the first part before you get to the open section, and that'll. It'll waste a menu, but it's more consistent than trying to jump on all the edges. And then the the cloud part, you you want to tank damage if you're going to be more consistent, and you want to jump on the edges if you're going for all out speed. You saved time. You didn't look very happy with that airman pattern you got. Was it a good think, pattern? You know, I no, it was. Well, I, I couldn't see what pattern it was because I was uh, talking. But that that's a very good split. Yeah. Um, right. It's it's yeah. It's not common that I get a better split than that. Like. 636 is entering like really really good run territory. Wait, you're you're not nervous yet. You're like Shh, this is every day for me. No. I so I have <laughs> lost so many good runs entering like the late game at this point that uh it takes it basically takes best pace I've ever been on entering Wiley 4 for me to be sad about a run anymore. Just no other like runs don't affect me anymore when they die. <laughs> yeah. I I I like to mention like Try not to get attached to the run. There, there's certain elements where I will get attached. Like, if I get really good RNG in, like, World 4, like, I start to get attached, which I know I shouldn't, but um, depends on what happens. So I pause there because I, I know from experience that this is one of the uh, weirdest odd tricks in the run. So I wanted yeah. to pause it and give you some time to kind of explain it before people watch it. First off, I made a link of video that uh, you guys don't have to watch right now, but it's extremely helpful in explaining what's going on okay, in cool. that that Clashman zip, uh, and it's called Clashman in the Japanese version. Um, now, what's going on there is that um, you can zip off the current screen you're on, and then you end up in the next screen in the game, even though the game displays Mega Man as being in the same screen. And you can do you can do most of the things uh, in the screen you're actually in the same as if you were act you know if if you were properly in the screen. Yeah. So. In that Clashman zip, we first zip to the, the above screen, and then uh, we use the item one we placed on the original screen to set up another zip, and we zip two more screens ahead in the level. Um, we do like addition. We do an additional vertical wrap, and it, it's like I, I basically can't get into more detail than I'm getting into here. But we vertical wrap again, and then we walk another screen, and we go down a ladder that is actually at the midpoint screen. Um, so when I, when we kill ourselves uh, and we use heat to kill ourselves because it cuts off the respawn time, mm -hmm. uh, when we kill ourselves, we, we end up in the midpoint screen. The reason that we end up in the midpoint screen is because we actually went down that ladder at the left of the midpoint screen when we respawn. And so um. the game thinks we're at the midpoint. And, uh, it saves us a lot of time <laughs> when we're going normally. That's insane. Yeah. So, so like, essentially it's like the game where you where you see yourself is not actually where you are um so i've always wondered this upon watching the speedruns do you guys and i know you guys you do the same thing in like woodman it, um does it work a lot because you guys have the entire level memorized like because you know where you are without having to actually see where you are is what allows you to continue doing this this glitch right like i always thought that like the game built like, itself in a way because it's glitched out and you just have to learn the path until you get to the halfway but it's actually the the construction of the level 
until you get to that point. So we're we're going through the um, the actual level. We just like we can't see the proper platforms on the okay. screen. Like you know, we, we use visual cues on the visible screen, but it's it doesn't really correspond to like of, what of Mega Man's actually walking on, right? Yeah. Okay. So I'm at seven thirty eight. I kind of did a pause playthrough as you're explaining. It was kind of perfect, actually. Um, yeah. I so I'm seven thirty eight on your timer. You can count off a yeah. an unpause. Three. Two, one, go. That's really good. That's really good. Yeah. I've, I've always wondered some of, some of those little little knickknacks. So uh, that trick, which is called the Biggie Special, named after a cool kid whose previous Twitch name was the Big Boy. Yep. Um, we're actually pretty consistent at that trick by now. I'd say I get it like eighty to ninety percent in runs. That's because awesome. Super complicated, but a lot of the individual components of that trick are pretty large frame windows, like nine nine frame window, for example, to do one of the zips, um, seven frame window to initiate the second zip. It, 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 you know, the individual things in that trick are not that hard. Now, uh, going up this climb, uh, there's more difficult things here. So you, you'll notice that I was placing item threes and jumping off them immediately. So you, there's a four pixel window for every tile which is 16 pixels in a tile, and you have to place the item three in that four pixel window of that tile to get the item three underneath you, and then you're able to jump off it. That's so risky, man. And because if you miss it, you're going to fall down the ladder a bit, so you're going to lose progress, plus you're not going to get the jump boost. But, uh, you know, four pixels is kind of big. Um, I'd say that I actually mess up the second half of Clash more often than the, the big, biggie special trick. Yeah, and it looked like the boss was not pleasant. Now, are the bosses RNG? Bosses are RNG. So that Clash Man fight uh, does have RNG, but there's a speedrunner named Prizzy, and he recently found a strategy to make it so you get roughly the same fast fight every time, regardless of what RNG gives you. So that's really helpful. That is very helpful. Now, is that based on when you press A to enter the level, or is that based on what screen you are when you enter the last screen, or...? Actually, based yet? on uh, Clashman responds to your uh, shot input, so the B button. Okay. So he actually he may jump, even though um, you didn't actually shoot anything. Like for example, if you have a shot already on screen and Clashman is on the ground and you press B again, you may not have shot anything, but he'll still jump anyway. Oh, okay. So okay, that's cool. Yeah. So now we're in Quickman stage, and we um, I did a zip uh, near the start of the stage, skipped a lot of it. Now, uh, the, the lights went off, but we turned them back on by uh, pausing the zip for a few frames. And the reason we want the lights on, we usually we, we used to keep them off because it's strictly faster, like you lose frames to turn them back on. But the reason we are turning them back on now is, one, it just makes your life easier. Uh, two, a higher chance of getting a frame-perfect zip here, which I did not get. But if you initiate that zip I just did on the first frame possible, you will still be encased in the wall when you enter this corridor screen, and you can save about two and a half seconds zipping through that screen, too. Yeah, I think I've seen that one before. I, I was wondering why sometimes uh, people were walking across. I didn't know. I thought it was based on uh, messing up your position, but it, is, it was uh, input, right? Single frame input. Uh, it's, it's a frame perfect trick to get that extra zip. Okay. And then uh, that quick man fight was actually incredibly good. He's uh, one of the most random elements in the game. There's a lot of different patterns he can give you. And uh, the pattern he gave me is one of the best by far. That's insane. Are you nervous yet? Uh, because no. you're pat. <laughs> really? Not not even. Uh, not really. I mean, like, say I start getting nervous around the Wily stages. Okay. After after the component, most of the components of RNG have passed, and then so what you Biggest... did in Clash, you're gonna do again here. Um. Bit more. So first we have to get through these dog skulls, which is actually the more difficult part of the stage. Uh, I don't think I've talked about um, zips where you have to hit the, the edge of the screen. So these zips we're doing, we don't want to get in a state where in, we're in the wrong uh, part of the level compared to where the game thinks we are. We want to hit the edge of the screen, and when you're moving one tile per frame, that's really hard. Because if you go past the edge of the screen, then you're kind of screwed. So uh, you have to... You, you either have to hit the edge of the screen or you have to stop just short, and we have to, we do have this technique called wiggling, where we move ahead one tile per uh, to, per wiggle. Mm -hmm. I always so wonder why you guys were wiggled. I thought you guys were stuck, but it's more so for, like, a comfort thing to control. Oh, my gosh. 
I was reading something in chat. But yeah, uh, this I'm not even going to try to explain this, Zip. Uh, you can get a gist of what's going on by watching that video I linked. Um, yeah, and from it's, you it's explaining same... it. Principles as the Clashman Zip that I explained, uh, but it's honestly even more complicated. So. <laughs> yeah, I've always watched that in awe. I mean, it's it's even not knowing what it is, it's so cool to watch. Like, you guys are, you guys are insane with with some of this stuff and mega man's not as easy with controlling with uh more with other games with momentum right mega man doesn't have much momentum right yeah so the way mega man works is when you're in the air um pressing a direction you immediately you just have one movement speed um so you can like wiggle in the air and he'll be moving the same speed per frame at all times if you're on the ground he sort of has a startup lag um as he like gets going Metal you got it, now. nice, nice, dude. Oh wait, where are you? I you just zip through the uh, the arrows, and now you zip through the you small screen. Man stage. Yep. And now you're past the okay, little, yeah. the first two clowns. You got it though, man. I I remember when you guys that was never even a thing. Is it possible to zip right down into the hole? It is, and it is. Um, yeah, I'd say that I I don't get that that often. You you in order to swish immediately into the shaft you actually need to press left for exactly one frame when you initiate that zip when you're in the conveyor belt a little tough but i'm going for it in runs it's standard now dude your runs insane right now this is so good the, the time yeah. seems man yeah this is this is very good pace like what? my woodman stage is sorry i've never seen uh, him jump yeah. before happened is um i think i missed a jump um what you want to do there is you want to stay roughly in the middle of the screen by doing small jumps because the conveyor starts going left but then it turns to going right in the middle of the fight and if you get too close to metal man he'll jump over your head to the left and it wastes like a second okay so that wasn't so bad so not not a bad thing but definitely uh could have been better um, this stage, I actually like the stage a lot, but it has a tough trick near the end of it. Um, we used to use item two in this screen and then use metal blade in the second half of the screen. But um, several years ago, I decided to go for the task route here where you walk through that first screen and then uh, you do, there's an item one zip uh, that's normally done in the next screen and uh, coming up right here. You switch to item two and we do a zip off the spike ceiling in a screen. And it's the way I do it, it's a one frame trick. It's insane. And because there's spikes that you have to take down, yeah. Oh my God, you yeah. got it. Yeah. Very, that was a good fog. idea to take the task strap, man. Saves like two seconds over the metal blade route, uh, which is, you know, that's a sizable amount of time at this level of play. Well, if you're trying to get a 2640X, right? I know this boss has some RNG, right? Uh, it does. So we can shoot one, two, or three bubbles. I think I got a two bubble. Yeah, two. Yeah, I got two bubble. Um, three bubble is the one you really don't want because it'll lag the game a significant amount. Like, you can lose two seconds just from him giving a three bubble fight. That's insane. Where are you on the timer? Um, I So the splits timer, uh, 15.55 right now. Oh, my God. My... I think you're a bit ahead. I am. It's it's speeding up right now. I'm at sixteen oh five. Can you pause for like two seconds and yeah, like yep. pause and pause? All right. There you go. Okay. So my a, a robot masters there was quite good. Uh, I think I had a fifteen forty bubble man kill and um, only like four or five faster eight robot times have been done than that. Okay. Can we just pause it for for yeah. a second? Sure. Okay, I'm gonna pause it. Okay, so, like, what is what's your main goal for Mega Man Two? Like, what's your what's your goal time? Like, your ideal? I can walk away from this category time. Six two X. Two? You want you want to get in the twenties? I want to. Okay, cool. So, when you're when you're looking at this time right now and you see that you're in the thirties, like, I know I know you say you said you've been on so many of these runs before, but at this point, um. Are you are you getting nervous? 
say at this point I'm starting to get nervous. Yeah. Okay, so your um, your heart rate's going up a little bit. You're, you you're... remember? Yeah, I quite can't quite remember like what I was feeling at this exact moment, of but I should be getting nervous around this point because Wiley One is a difficult stage, and uh, it's very easy to just lose the run there. Okay. And I don't get 1540s that often. Like I can I can expect a 1540 like uh, maybe once every two streams. Some some days I have really good nights. I'm just getting like pace after pace. Yeah. Um, were you on top of your game at this moment? Like when you when you started to do the runs that uh, that day that you got this this new record? Were did you feel like you were on your game, or were you like another day, another day in the office? Uh, yeah, I felt like I was playing well to, uh, that day. Right on. For so sure. so you were seeing the results on how how you were feeling on how you were playing, which is really good. So would you say that you were more confident than? Um, normal or or when you get to this point are you always pretty confident uh in your ability well, to uh play i guess you know it's a funny question because i had so before i took the record back i had a long string of runs where um record potential paces even 3x potential paces to wiley one even wiley four and they all just had run ending mistakes in them like, uh and i'm talking like 20 run 20 runs to wiley one on record pace oh, that all just died I, that, i'm that, confident in my abilities to play the wiley stages but when you have that many failures in a row exactly not even just rg it's just the various mistakes because this game's end game is brutal uh, when you have that many runs in a row die um you know it, it starts to affect you a little bit because um you're, you're just like when am i gonna have that breakthrough man right and then you start like it's such a, a mental uh battle too because then um you you haven't beat your best time before so you you sometimes start to well at least you know i did for a while you know you start to question am i even able like i know i physically can but can i put it all together is that even possible for me to achieve i've never achieved that before so it's a it turns into like a mental battle it's very good that you it's good that you said that it's good to know that somebody else experiences those things you you, you obviously try not to let it bring you down too much right but yeah i i try like you know, sometimes I have thoughts like uh, w when I was um, that that one weekend I mentioned where I was grinding like 11 hours a day, mm -hmm. I had thoughts along the lines of, well, this run could be it or like, I'm just going to feel crap about my Brockman 2 grind for like the next however many weeks I have to take off from the game. And just those thoughts creep in and, you know, you can't really prevent those thoughts coming because like you can't control what your brain is going to go to. Mm -hmm. well, but, especially uh, you when, can only when... just like you can only just redouble your fortitude just like keep your eyes right on the game and just focus on the next like input you need to do in the game just like oh, when i'm at when i'm at this spot and like the wily castle cutscene is playing i'm focused on okay i'm gonna teleport in i'm gonna i'm gonna open my menu i'm gonna go up one go to the next page go up two, go to item two select it that's all I'm thinking about because I want to do that menu as well as possible. Stay focused. You don't want to have those bad mistakes that you've had in the past when you're when you're given that chance, right? And that, like I, I've learned from experience, if you're not focused on the next thing you're about to do, you could do some stupid thing. Like I went to item one once recently in a run because I just wasn't focused on the menu coming up. So I went to item one, I threw it, and then like the run died because. When an item is on screen, you can't menu to another thing. You have to so wait I for it to like, drain, right? I would have, yeah, I would have needed to wait for it to drain, and I'm just like, okay, five seconds down the drain. I'm not on great pace anyway. I'm just gonna reset. <laughs> yeah, damn, dude, that's, yeah. So speedrunning can be such a mind battle. The worst, the worst is when you have a failing run and you look back later that night or the next day on that run and you, you think to yourself, why, why would I even ever do that? You know, and that that shows how focus sometimes you need to be so essentially everything you're saying like like works out perfectly yeah so to anyone out there learning how to speed run focus focus guys you need to focus okay i'm at 1629 or the vod um on your splits sorry okay give me a second here yep yep that's a lot of what being a pilot is like that's pretty cool Gotta watch out for them clouds, man. Ready to go. Yeah. Okay, so three, two, one, go. So we got the full experience of Wiley, so here it is. Okay.
So Wily One is rough. Um, it start out. It doesn't start out too bad, but there's two very critical tricks in the middle of the stage. Uh, we first take this item two and we fly across that whole expanse. Um, using the item two across that whole section saves about three seconds over walking there. So we want to make full use of it there. And now, so we're coming up to the first vertical wrap. And to set this up, we place three item ones. Uh, we place one to jump off, and then we place two more. The second item one at the top boosts us up further. Cool. And then uh, basically when you grab a ladder um, and you're like off screen, or you're in a wall and you grab and you're like touching the top of the screen, you can jump. And then the game will place you in the above screen. And uh, we use that to do vertical wrap in various places. Insane. Like, and now right. here, uh, that is one of the most punishing screens in the game to fail. If you uh, if you fall there, it's very easy to fall. Um, you, you'll lose like 15 to 20 seconds. And you wasted three item ones. Um, but you also have to get underneath the wall there to set up the second vertical wrap. And you need good positioning for that and, as well. And it looks like you save a lot of time not having to climb, right? Climbing is so slow. Yeah, you save like four seconds um, by doing that additional set of wraps after the open screen. Now here, so I actually used to have a very slow fight here. This this fight is slow compared to my normal standards. I'm very impressed uh, with I what learned... you did with your thumbs there. So I learned how to double mash um, about a month ago, a little more than a month ago. And uh, I used to just single button mash and I, i'm a slow single button masher so i used to kill the dragon when he hit like the left edge of the screen and was already coming back toward me mm -hmm. but now i can kill the dragon when he's just barely started going backward the double mashing is unparalleled man you can't you can't compete with it it just helps so much as the mashers literally saving over a second on the dragon fight now yeah. compared to my old fights takes less stam stamina like you, you don't drain as much energy it's it's amazing but you got it though. That's good. I got the uh, the zip over the spikes there. You do have some invincibility frames to walk over the spikes, and then you can set up a zip there. So scary. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's a big choke point in races. People mess that up in races just because it's a pressure point, like spikes, death. You know. Yeah, of course. Oh no. Oh, with the route we're currently using, we do have to use Leaf Shield in this corridor, and I got particularly bad luck with drops. Now, normally, or I shouldn't say normally, but a lot of the time, uh, with the strat, the strat we're using in that corridor, the the drops actually get zipped off screen. Uh, for some weird reason, if they if a drop appears like inside a wall, then the game will zip that drop off screen. But there, I got bad RNG. There's some kind of like RNG I don't understand, and sometimes <laughs> the drops don't get don't get zipped off. And so that's what happened there. That's pretty cool. So it, so it is, it's still an RNG point in the run, which, you know, can be good and bad. But unfortunately, yeah. you got unlucky. Obviously, when you use your power up and you grab a drop, every, the screen stops, but the timer doesn't. So you're losing time no matter what if you're building up health or power. Yeah, and we don't want to refill anything in that corridor, basically. We, we don't need the leap shield energy. We don't need health. Mm -hmm. And... Um, the energy ticks up really slowly in this game relative to other Mega Man games. That sucks. And you got... Yeah. You, luckily, you didn't have a lot of health loss, but you'll always have the same amount of health loss at that point anyways, right? So it's always gauged as a refill or not refill kind of thing. Yeah, basically. Cool. All right, now I'm minus five at this point. Yeah, and, baby. Uh, so you can see that my time in those splits, the, the final time is 26.42. And I did say my final goal is 26 2x, but right now I just I just want a, a 3x. Um, I'm actually I'm sort of racing cool kids at the first 3x, uh, but like 3x has been a it's been a goal of mine for a long time, like since before I took a break. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm on I'm like thoroughly on pace for it right now, oh, so yeah. I'm, I'm really just trying to focus as hard as possible. Now this level this run this level is fairly easy though, right? This is like a, a free like kind of like a break a little bit yeah so um there's one thing there's one difficult thing you can go for in this level which i opted not to this time uh you can go for a zip at the end of the level and it's one of those zips where you have to hit the edge of the screen and if you go past you're just screwed um exactly. but i didn't right go for here. it here it's right here uh it saves about a second and a half if you do get it uh perfectly that is does it boost you right into the boss room well yeah right on that's tank fight. Um, 
normally you want to kill him in three jumps. It's possible to kill him in two, but it's um, it's beyond my mashing ability at the moment. I haven't really jumping double mashing to the point where I can go for it in runs yet. Yeah, at least not without you know stabbing your thumbs. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I have gotten two jump kills in practice, but it's just not like not nearly consistent enough for me to try and go for in runs. But that's that's what makes you a good speedrunner. Like you you understand your time, but you're not greedy. Like you know you, you stick with what you know and you try and go for. It. That's that's like the most impressive part of speedrunning. And uh, back in the day, before I took the break, uh, I was not that way at all. Like I tried to go for every single tiny time save possible, and it honestly it really held me back. Uh, but when I came back, I was like, okay, that mentality was dumb. Go for <laughs> what I know is doable. And, you know, it might not be as flashy. It might not be as impressive to, like, the 1% who knows the run or whatever. But I, I don't care. I just want a good time. Mm -hmm. Like, that change has really re yielded amazing results for me since I came back. Yeah, sometimes you just gotta... I don't know. I don't know. I don't even know if greedy is the right word because you're just trying to push to your potential. But sometimes you just gotta lay back and realize, you know, what I, I can't do everything all the time. Like it's not gonna work. I mean, you have to understand that you only have limited time to, um, to to grind out attempts. I was sort of of the mentality that okay, I know I'm gonna throw all my runs to like going for this hard stuff, but I'm gonna grind this forever. But that's just like a really stupid way of thinking. Exactly. All right, so the whole Wiley Force stage just passed us by. There was a lot of stuff that went on, um, but I had a really good stage. We can rewind and... it. We can definitely rewind it. Let's rewind it. If, if there's some things you want to explain, I don't want I don't want to miss out on it. We were talking go to the start. This, this is one of the most notorious stages in the game, for sure. Sure, sure. Okay, so I paused it at 2147 on your splits. All right, one sec. Yeah, definitely. I don't want to miss it. Are you kidding me? I was too busy talking about random stuff, man. Yeah. It's good stuff. It's good, though. It's good. What What did you say is the time on the splits? 2147. All right. I need a second here. It's all good. Yeah, thank you, everyone, for the congratulations. You guys are frigs. Good to go. Winner Mega Man. No, bases in Mega Man 10, but maybe. Uh, three, two, one, go. Right on. Okay. So, Wiley 4 widely considered the most difficult stage in the speed run. Uh, there's basically there's difficult stuff happening in almost every screen. Now, um, the, st the start of the stage has a lot of the item 3 drops I was talking about earlier where you need to place it in like the 4 pixel window. There's the first one and then we do a second one and then a third one here. Um, after this, there's a new strat that uh, has been known in the task for a while, but we worked it into runs also thanks to Prizzy where you jump through the fake floor and it saves about a second. And then we do another vertical wrap here. Do a zip at the top of the level here in the checkpoint screen. Uh, Elo actually, Elo Nija, the previous record holder, found the setup for like the extended zip there. Spike screens are, um, they're kind of a gauntlet of scary screens because if you make a platforming mistake, you're just dead on the spikes. And uh, I've, had, I've lost a lot of runs to uh, this third screen and some runs to the fourth screen, and some runs to the first screen. I've I've lost I've lost runs to all the screens. <laughs> of course. And there's a really annoying thing. There's a really annoying thing that can occasionally happen uh, while transitioning from the third to the fourth screen, where uh, the game just instantly kills you. And it's called it's called a delay scroll, but in this case, it, the game just like kills you. <laughs> it's oh something used in the task, like the technique. Uh, but anyway, um, all right, we're at the boss. Boo beam trap. <laughs> uh, we we first zip in. We kill the top turrets first, and then we set up something called a damage transfer. By um, you might have noticed, I took damage on a specific pixel, sort of in the middle of the screen. Yeah, it looked like you did um, set up for something. Thing on a specific pixel, the volley of shots came out from the turrets. I took damage there intentionally to set up a damage transfer on that second to last turret at the end. You got a gold, dude. What? Hell yeah. So I am six seconds ahead here. I'm on. Okay, you're like, nervous. You're nervous. To the X page. I'm don't, nervous. Don't fool me. Don't I, don't play with my heart, okay? I know you're I know you're scared right now. No, I'm nervous. <laughs> and you'll see why you'll see what happens from being nervous right here. Right here. What? Where did it where did the leaf go? 
it, it tanked off the, t the tornado above me. So, and then you okay. missed an input on but that block and then the menuing. To explain what just happened there. So I got the best pattern from Airman. I go for a route specifically for the refights uh, where I start with Air and Buster. And if I get that specific pattern that I did get, I can kill him in one wave. Oh my gosh. This is the task. Now I got the pattern. I got the two Buster shots I need to get on him in order to get the one wave kill. And then I shot the first leaf shield like one or two frames too early. It tanked off the tornado above me. And then I basically just like lost it. And I fumbled around for the rest of the fight. And it ended up being a very average fight. And so I lost like six seconds because of that one mistake. Dang, man. But it's rough. It is rough, but um, it's a learning experience for sure. It actually was because I went and looked at what exactly happened there. Um, I, I practiced that fight a lot like the next day and I realized, okay, you the B button to summon the first leaf shield when you're firmly on the ground because it'll never tank the top tornado when you do that. So, you know, fingers crossed I won't fail it in that way again in a run. Yeah, hopefully not. But uh, the rest of your fights went fairly well. I did, like, I was thrown off by the airman mistake. Of and course. I had, like, a, a miss menu and I, like, uh, had some movement problems but i recovered fairly well i recovered well enough to uh, still make this a possible record coming out of the refights now this machine kill we want to shoot the crash bombs just below the cockpit so that the explosions from the crash bomb deal uh continuous damage to the machine that's why you kill and uh, kill it quickly if you were to actually shoot the cockpit directly then uh the crash bomb will sort of just be absorbed and do like one tick of damage but by using the explosions, we deal all the damage, like, right away. Uh, yeah, metal is weak. The metal is weird. That's uh, something gamers have been laughing at for, like, 30 years now. <laughs> um, okay, also, so I one... wanted to ask about the... Hold on, I'm going to pause it. I wanted to ask about the... the also, the bubble in the refights. Uh, his RNG still applies to the same thing, right? You still got to hope for the one, two, or three bubble. You want to hope for the one bubble, right? Actually, I don't think that two or three bubble patterns actually lag the game in the refights, but because there's can, no water. Can... I think um, I, there's still water, but it's probably due to like the lack of spikes. I'm not really sure what it is, but he doesn't lag the the game that much, if at all, in the refight. Okay, and the other so, thing I um, wanted to ask um, is that the the boss before the refights, um, you have to perfectly set up your crash um, ammunition, right, for the uh the the oh, i almost said bowser mecha for the for the wily uh robot right well, um the way that you handled the the wily four boss fight the boobeam trap room mm -hmm. is uh, critical to the refights or the machine kill specifically because uh if you get the optimal fight on boobeam then you have two crash bombs remaining and one crash bomb is used to kill phase one of the machine the second one is used to kill phase two of the machine uh, but if you mess up the boobing fight at all, then you could be down one or even both crash bombs. And in that case, um, you know, you need to break out Metal Blade. Usually people mash Metal Blade on him. If you have no crash bombs, then there's various strats you can do. But uh, I think the standard thing is use Atomic Fire to kill the first phase and then just mash out the second phase with Metal Blade. But in comparison, that's a pretty hefty time loss. Basically... Um, if you miss one of the crash bombs on the boobeam fight, then it's probably PB dead. Um, definitely someone if in you're your stance, completely right? out of crash bombs. Yes, yes. Yeah. Like, you'll lose, uh, at least three seconds from only having one crash bomb. But uh, if you have no crash bombs, you're just screwed. <laughs> oh my god, so... There's never anything dull in this run, man. It's it's so it's, it's so stressful. Like I know how yeah. to I know how to move and jump, but move, jump, and shoot and conserve ammo. Like imagine imagine Mario had limited fire fireballs. <laughs> oh, dude, that'd be rough. Yeah, that'd be brutal. Like if you miss a shot on uh, one of the Koopa kids, then uh, you can't you can't get an optimal kill anymore. <laughs> right? Or if you miss a shot on like a boom boom, you got to stump. R ridiculous. So I'm at twenty six twenty two, and we are at the final. Final stage. This is exciting. Now I've 26, heard through twenty six twenty two. Yeah, I've heard through the grapevine that um, there's a, a specific way to kill this boss for optimal WR strats. And if you don't 
do those strats, <laughs> you lose a significant amount of time. And some of the strats are based on how fast you can mash as well. So, uh, Elanesia, who is a legendarily amazing masher, He's a single thumb amazing. mashing, by the way. Oh, yeah. Like, his mashing is at least 15 hertz on the standard. Yeah, he can do like one, one, he can do almost 150 in 10 seconds, can he? Something like that, yeah. That's He's so nuts. disgusting. But, um, arthritis, he, though. <laughs> he uploaded a video um, recently of him killing the alien before, like, so the alien uh, loops down and then he loops around to the left and then uh, he hits the middle again and then he loops to the right. And uh, in Elanisha's video, he kills the alien before uh, before the alien leaves the middle of the screen to go top right. Oh my God. And um, that'll save like two to three seconds. That's it'll so it'll save like three seconds on my standard kill. Yeah. So um, I actually have started working on uh, jump double mashing while moving for the alien fight. And again, this is something it's going to take a lot of effort to like be able to do this. But um, you know, I, I don't want to leave this time on the table. And exactly. That, that's a very big after... advantage. So I, I'm planning after I get like a very solid that I think will be safe for a while put in like massive time into getting my jump level mashing just on point so that I can open myself up to this time save on the alien and to a lesser extent guts tank. Yeah. That's it. That's insane. Uh, for anyone in chat wondering though, like certain, certain speeds, not just relative to your movement can create such crazy um, time differences, like uh, special techniques with menuing mashing for this instance, um, manipulation of enemy le D lag strats. Like speed run speed running isn't always just about um, how you move the character. Are you moving him as fast as possible? Yes. Okay. Well, that's as far as I can take it. That is definitely not the case when it comes to some games. So, and I, I want to bring up I want to bring up since you mentioned menuing, um, I would say that so I it, it's considered I have the the fastest menus of, of any speedrunner playing this game, right and um, I'd say I actually save multiple seconds over almost every other speedrunner if you know if, if my menus go well um but i'll say multiple seconds due to my menus and because you're just saving it, frames it, you know, right? it comes down to yeah it's saving frames and you menu like at least 30 times each run you know i use the ball of my left thumb and I just, like, jackhammer it on the D-pad. And, you know, I really, I put my entire mental being into every menu. And I think, like, you know, I mentioned again, like, when I'm entering Wily 1, I I put 100% focus on the menu coming up. Yeah. And I think that, you know, that has something to do with how consistently fast my menus are. It seems like menuing is some of your favorite parts of the actual speedrun itself. I mean... I wouldn't. I, I don't know if I'd say favorite, but I know that I have an advantage over most other runners in this department. Yeah. And it, you know, it's a part of the game. You have to optimize every part of the game. Of course. So do you do you mathematically have all of your like? Is that impressive to have all like in certain situations of the run? You're like, okay, I need a menu. I need to press up three times, or, or I don't know how you switch in in um, pages in Mega Man Two. Is it? Do you scroll to the bottom and it switches? Do you press left or right? I go to like the end of the so you go um there's two pages and you go to like the top entry of the menu and then you press a and then it switches pages okay so, so... for example there's a menu in wily 2 from item 2 to the leaf shield weapon mm -hmm. have to press down twice button you and then you have to press either up or down four times to get to the leaf shield weapon. That's you know that's a lot of presses in a row of the same direction. And yeah. You can watch anyone else do that menu compared to me. I have consistently the fastest menu there. That's good. So while other people excel in like the mashing, you excel in other components. Right, but you know I I understand that I have a mashing limitation. And I'm taking steps to overcome that lim limitation anyway. Yeah, and to be honest with you, like I know I'm I know I'm super hyped about like the double thumb. That's like been my thing for so long. But I I, I am also limited to by my ability to single mash. But also, um, the way I single mash, uh, 
it's a strain on my body. It's very bad for the for me. Like I tighten up all my tendons and muscles and stuff, and like I strain my. Oh yeah. It's, it's not good for me. It's not good for my shoulder. It's not good for my arm. So in a sense, double double mashing has saved me. Now the problem with double mashing though is you can only do it in a lot of parts where you're standing still. So it's very exactly. nice. It's very nice to see that you're working on a um uh, a way to double mash during this boss battle with using the D-pad. Yeah. Now I've done it in Mega so, Man before, like some double mashing, and the only thing I could come up with is if you could learn how to play Mega Man with your pinky, because then you could have <laughs> pinky on the D-pad and then thumbs on the button. But I don't even know if that will work. I think what um, the setup I've been working on is actually my ring finger on the uh, the right arrow on the D-pad, my left my left thumb on uh, the B button, my right thumb also on the B button. And then um, the side of my right index finger on the A button. So I got four fingers doing stuff. And uh, I actually I have been able to get more. I, I can't show it on screen, but I, I'm, I'm trying to mimic what you're saying here. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's no, it takes a little bit to figure out even how to configure that. Like, yeah. Hold so, the controller. so in this position, you can't actually hold the controller. You got to lap it, right? You got to put it on your lap when you do this. Um, I, I think so, yeah, yeah. Do you have small hands or big hands? I think they're on the smaller side. Yeah, me too, that's good. Insane. That's I, I good. have I have worked on it to the point where, um, compared to my best possible thing, uh, the, the, you know, compared to the most hits I can get from a single jump with single mashing, I can get more hits in with double mashing during a single jump on this alien boss fight. But uh, it's nowhere it's it's nowhere near the level of consistency where I can like turn it into a good fight, you know. Insane. Well, let's let's find out the conclusion of what you do. Are you at twenty six twenty two? I am. Yes. Right on. All right. So three, two, one, go. <sighs> Wiley. Wiley. So I'm uh, point eight ahead coming into the stage. I think my zip was good. I actually I think I crashed the door, which saves time. Like. Crashing the door means I hit the edge of the screen immediately without needing to wiggle. And now uh, this boss fight was actually um, actually a little mediocre, but it doesn't waste that much time. Um, the I, I still killed Wily like a high 2641. And I know I always split at least like 0.5 seconds late. Well, yeah, by the time you kill him and your reaction and then having to move and split, it's a, it's a simple retime, but yeah. For sure. And so, you know... Because of the mistake on the air refight, this was not quite the run I wanted. But um, I'm always happy with a new record, new progress, new PB. It's you know, it just uplifts you, and you keep, like it makes it that much easier to keep grinding. Not to mention you've you've again achieved playing the best you've ever played, which is always a good way of being like, okay, I'm making progress, right? When you when you're not PBing, it's so depressing. Yeah, for sure. Well, for a long time. I mean, you can't push yourself too hard, right? I, pl I plan to uh, play this game for a while still. Because, so, you know, my, my... Go ahead. So my break from speedrunning, like, I, I, I spent about two and a half to three years away from speedrunning entirely. And I actually didn't think I would ever come back to serious speedrunning, let alone running this game. The reason I came back is because of the Mega Man relay at HDQ that Sinister organized. And I don't know if you watched that, but it went amazingly. And uh, my team won, and I had a really amazing performance in it. And that, you know, I was just so excited about that. And so when I got back home, I was like, all right, we're going into world record attempts. And I started doing those. I was enjoying the stream so much. Uh, I could see that my play was, like, significantly and noticeably better than when I was playing in 2014. I was like, holy crap, I'm, like, way better than I was three years ago. Do you think that had to not do so much with the fact of the time off but you 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 had to have grown as a person during that time off as well right a hundred percent yeah and um, you, your mind was in a better I place probably... well maybe not a better place but in a different place oh uh, it wasn't a better place it is a bit in a better place right and i'm just i'm, I'm away uh, like i i understand the the human psyche and like what mentally goes into an activity like speedrunning way better than i did in the past and I, you know, my priorities are different too. Mm -hmm. Then, 
I care like this might sound uh, a little odd, but I cared much more about like getting the world record back then. It was like much more of a big deal to me. Me too. Like yeah. I still care about it a lot. I still care about it a lot now. Um, really want to push this as far as possible because it's fun, and I know that activity to me. I just love speed running, and uh, it's you know as much about the journey of grinding out the runs and doing the practice and interacting with the stream as it is about having that you know the day where you get the run yeah the mystery too like you never know what day it's gonna be you have no idea right it's so that's such a yeah. weird thing it's always on a day you're never expecting always you know i've had some really <laughs> incredible days where i'm getting like amazing pace after amazing pace like i've had days where i've had multiple um sub fifteen forty bubble man kill paces and cool but uh i don't actually pb that day yeah and, oh, you see me uh so i have like these uh the square icons but i've changed since but like i use these to indicate how good the split is in my pb and that's because so I got cool a new PB. i like that yeah. i like that concept um is the super dark green now. like you you did a really good pb but uh as i was saying some days i have i'm just playing amazingly and I'm having amazing pace after amazing pace. Uh, but I don't actually PB. So I still consider that a really, really good stream. But, you know, you didn't improve your time. Whereas other days, um, I think where I first got my 26, so 26.59, I played for seven hours. Now, my first hour was pretty good. And then the next five hours, I was, like, interacting with chat a lot. There were people goofing off in my chat, friends and stuff. And I was just, like, not really focused, and I was playing horribly. But I, I was staying up for um, a marathon run at, like, 4 a.m. And then, like, some people stopped talking, and then I started playing seriously again, and I got my first 26. <laughs> like, I pb <PB'd laughs> right then and there after six hours of playing horribly. It's so weird how that works. Like, um, sometimes when you're you're more tired, I guess... Maybe, maybe you weren't, like, super tired, but you, you already played for so long, so you're slightly losing interest. You're like, okay, well, today, you know, I'm not playing well. But sometimes that prevents your mind from trickling and trailing off to all these things that you would focus on on these good runs, right? Because mm -hmm. you're, like, kind of tired and stuff like that. I remember I PB'd in 100% one time at the end of a 12-hour marathon I did. And I was, like, super tired, but how could I play the best I've ever played <laughs> being super tired, right? It's, it's very strange. That is strange. So, uh, but yeah. With that being said, so like, what what got you into speedrunning? I know I know you're you're one of the old guys with me, but like, what what got mm -hmm. you into it? Like, what started it, and why Mega Man? Oh, um, I think that you know I, I did watch the the famous Super Mario Brothers three tasks uh, way back in the day when I was a youngster. Oh yeah. But um, you know that the first speedrun I saw uh, like right before I actually got into it was actually, uh, believe it or not, Shadow of the Ninja on SDA by Liger of Fortune. And okay. so I, I, had been, I had been playing a lot of NES games. Uh, I was talking with a friend of mine, and we were both uh, really interested in playing like more obscure, older, uh, classic games. And so uh, we had both played Shadow of the Ninja recently, and he linked me uh, this, this speed run. And um, we talked about like beating it jokingly, but like I was really intrigued by it. It, it was really fun to watch, and um, it, I, just the concept was cool to me. And then uh, I think some task videos at, after that, and then I found the classic games done quick vods. So I did not watch CGDQ live when it was happening, mm -hmm. but I found the vods about a month after it happened. And I have to say that something magical was happening at that event. It was like exactly i think it was exactly what i was looking for at that point in my life without even knowing that it was what i wanted to find yeah because it was this group of really passionate people um playing these old games that you generally don't really see people talk about that much anymore and they had this like extremely they, they had this extremely deep expertise about these games and they had this like really fun bantery uh atmosphere going on and they seemed like so tight and uh, everything about it seemed really cool. And I can point to one moment where I was just absolutely blown away. In Andrew G's Super Mario Brothers 2 speedrun, mm -hmm. he found a new glitch live on the warp fight where um, warp is in his dying animation, and then you throw another vegetable at him, and then uh, you hit 
his sprite and then he gets glitched out and he gets sent off the screen like really quickly and no one had ever seen that glitch before and andrew was like oh my god what i've never seen that before and it was like the first i've never seen that before moment ever in gdq history and i was like that was mind blowing for me oh my god that's crazy um how did you how did you feel when um when you entered the realm of these games did you were you under the assumption that that you were late to the party um or did you not think of it that way that's a, that's a really interesting question i think i don't think i felt that way no um i felt like i was getting in at a good time because the community like, there were a bunch of people in the community already but it was definitely like you know it wasn't super mainstream or anything uh, no. i'd never heard of speedrunning before those first couple of months when i found it so i was like oh man i'm getting into something like cool and niche so you found the classic games done quick before even the SDA forums and stuff. Uh, well, I did watch the uh, the Shadow of the Ninja Run on SDA, so oh, I okay, uh, okay. knew about that. But then I found this the classic games done quick vods like a month later. Yeah, because at that point in time, in in because uh, we're we're pretty close to the same age, it was like forums on a gaming site were like something you didn't really want to venture into much because it wasn't highly established like even the first time i started watching streams i never i never ever created a profile on like Ustream or justin tv i i always thought the concept of like talking to someone while they're playing games was like strange but it's because it was new mm. right so yeah you, you don't really follow the forums but then it turned into something just like you said like magical like something crazy happened and like i bet you wanted nothing more than to you know message him on a forum and say yo i was watching live that was amazing right totally so it, it's like uh, i actually so much. I first streamed on both Ustream and Justin.tv in 2009 because I had a group of friends and we wanted to just stream games to each other, like playing. I remember I had a, this project going with my fr a group of friends where we each took one segment of the GBA Link to the Passport and would do like a Let's Play of it. And we were going to like um, link up all our different segments into like one completed Let's Play by like a bunch of different people. But, uh, I, so I, someone did the first segment, then I did the second segment, like I did the desert palace segment and then like, they didn't finish, they didn't, uh, continue it after that. So crazy. How many streams do you think you did on the, on those platforms before, uh, um, they turned it I'd to say, switch? Uh, well, before I found speed Ring, I did probably like three or four streams on them. Um, and then I was on Ustream when Ustream was the site to do speed running on. Oh, yeah. And then basically um giano and his crew first migrated to justin.tv and most speedrunners followed after that yeah this and then, uh, uh, about, on giano and uh, a couple other guys yeah and then it was about a year or two before they rebranded to twitch that's insane i love i love the progression of the way it went it's it's the way the way it goes and especially with the with the old like narcissa siglemic san giano i think um peaches one of the really old oh, Peaches has been around for a long time. Yeah. Exactly. Um, they were, it seemed like just because those, those guys were playing the right game at the right time and transferred right at the right, like it just path. It just paved the way. It was just insane. Yeah. It's like I was, I was dumbfounded by the Mario 64 speedruns. Like I can't, I can't really watch much Mario 64 speedruns right now because I've overflowed my brain so much with, with so many of those speedruns. <laughs> I think that is literally every single speedrunner that's been around for like more than three years. I am the exact same way. I watched of Giano and Siglemic playing Mario 64 back in like 2012. Did you watch every now, day for his summer marathon as well? I watched a lot of his summer marathon. Right. Actually, I held my own Mario RPG world record attempts marathon after that because I saw his and I was like, oh man, I want to do something similar. So I did like about a week long. Um, yeah. That was that was a ton of fun, but so but yeah, you, but I, like, you were saying yeah, you were watching a lot. Overloaded my brain with Mario sixty four, and now I can really only watch like new tasses, or I don't even watch new one twenty star records. I'm just like, I, I'm like I'm like burnt out for life on that game. <laughs> right, right, and like yeah, sometimes yeah. I hate how early I got into the punch because as time goes on, more things are getting discovered, more things are being created, right? But I've always told yeah. myself if I have to watch that cutscene one more time. One more failed <laughs> Lakitu skip. I'm going to I'm going to go insane. Do you remember when Mario 64 used to be based on the Rainbow Ride getting the old the really old uh Lakitu triple jump? 
Do you remember that one? Really old Lakitu triple jump. Yeah, where there wasn't the easy setup where you where you grab the side of the spinner in the the rainbow ride. The the one thing no, Lemic oh. used to try and do all the time. I mean, regardless, like the game has formed so much. They have the 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 canalis, and then they have the the ninety nine percent chance of canalis, and then now they have the hybrid where you like split it in half. There's yeah. so much. I think I know what you're talking about actually, where they have to bounce off a of Lakitu to get to the the spinning platforms. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yep. that, that like even you know that game is still really really hard, but oh, yeah. uh, there there were like almost no setups for anything back then. Like Siglemic was basically forging new uncharted territory, and he brought that game down by like seven minutes while no one else was even trying at the level that he was. Yeah, he had like two or three other competitors. He used to play for Bingos. Actually, started back then as well too. I remember watching a lot of sixty four Bingos and Ocarina of Time Bingos. Ocarina of Time was really fun to watch back then too, but unfortunately now it's it's not something I can. You know really what the watch. really really funny thing about Ocarina of Time Bingo is that basically a Link to the Past randomizer has replaced it. It a Link <laughs> to the Past randomizer is OOT Bingo, just more accessible to newer players. Yeah, I heard it's a lot of fun. I still have not tried a Link to the Past randomizer yet. There actually, I you know I I've been watching a little more of that game because I used to run it. I did it in two GDQs. And um, I have not really been involved with that game for the past like four years. Um, but I, you know, I've been watching a little more of it recently, and I might do like a casual playthrough on stream just to like, you know, I used I used to be a really serious speedrunner of this game, uh, and I did it in two GDQs, and then I didn't play it for like five years. Yeah, I'm really curious how a playthrough would go now. Right, I feel like I would have to play through the actual. Um game itself i don't i really don't know much about a link to the past i've done a little bit but not anything i wouldn't even it's know a really solid going. game yeah stone cold classic <clears throat> um so aside from that do you have do you have any advice for anyone watching this video wherever they are at whatever place in time like any advice to help get them through any rough patches they have for speedrunning? i mean a lot of us have, have experienced pretty much the same thing um but how do you get through some rough patches like what do you do um well first i want to go back to a something you mentioned earlier uh how sure. i got into Mega Man. sure um so quickly before we get off that note um i actually didn't play Mega Man 2 as a kid believe it or not i only played it for the first time um in my college years right. so um i played it when i was like 18 or 19 on emulator i played through like one through six in a row um, I didn't even have it in mind for speedrunning when I first got into the the hobby, but I was watching Seth Glass's streams of it uh, when he was streaming, and th those were some of the most exciting streams in speedrunning happening at the time. Uh, I really loved watching them. He's a monster at Mega Man. Yeah, he like he, so back then he was one of the speedrunners you know how there's like often for any activity there's the the creator or the person who's doing the things that all the other people who are doing that thing want to watch but like maybe not a lot of people outside of the world of that activity know about that person mm -hmm. last was that person that all the other speedrunners watched yeah so that doesn't matter what I, game I, you played uh, so i loved his streams and then um Again, it comes back to Cool Kid. I saw Cool Kid doing races of Mega Man 2 on Speedruns Live when Speedruns Live was relatively new. Mm -hmm. And like the combination of those two things made me decide to just start practicing it on emulator. I was traveling in Asia with my family, and um, just during downtime, I had an emulator on my DS, and I would just like learn tricks and practice tricks. And um, back then, there were no resources whatsoever for learning the game. There was nothing. Nothing, yeah, I know. So I had to, to learn everything from scratch myself, experiment. Um, and a lot a lot of the inputs in Mega Man 2 when you're doing zips and stuff are just, like, you can't even see what input is causing what thing to happen. Like, the zips, you have to, like, jump and press left, and it's happening off screen, and you have no clue. <laughs> yeah, the only thing you know is if you got it or not. Yeah, exactly. That's cool. So so right, but... so Mega Man came from inspiration essentially. And then uh now it's become the speed run I'm like by far the most attached to, most passionate about. That's good. 
That's good. Uh, my my story is uh, rather similar. Like Mario Three was one of the last speed games I had explored option to. Of course, in my early adult ages as well. I played it as a kid, but you know, once I was like six or seven, like that was it. Sega. I had Sega, and then I yeah. played a lot of Mortal Kombat, and you know, and then I kind of I didn't have a Super Nintendo growing up, and the next system I got was like a. 64 and a, and a GameCube, and I, I moved away from it. But then the Wii came out, the virtual mm. console. I was like, all right, all right, I remember this game. And it just, you know, a couple years Dude, later. I remember, I remember on the SDA forums, I think you had a friend posting ILs from you on the on Wii VC. This was like 2010 or something. ILs. And, uh, yeah, you, you, you posted ILs recorded on VHS on the SDA forums. That's right. Me and, me and Chatham's. Yes, yes. Yeah, Chatham. Chatham. Yeah, I, re I remember all this, man. I, oh, yeah. I, I saw you. I saw That's you back times. My, <laughs> my picture was the Giga Bowser <laughs> from... Uh... Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I remember, dude, I remember that too. Yes, Giga Bowser. Yeah. Um, yeah, so like from all of that, like what, what essentially forced me into it was a, a website called Metroid 2002. I, okay. I had the GameCube and I played Metroid Prime and I, like, I'm still obsessed with that game. That is by far my favorite game in the entire world. Like, you can't... Oh, wow, okay. You can't beat Metroid Prime. It's, and then that site branched off to some weird archive site where you could just watch video. And then that archive site got me to SDA. And when I found SDA, I was like, what? This is like a civilization that I want to be a part of. I was like, this is who I am, and I need this. So my main mission was to be published on that site. And then it just spawned from there. So, But anyways, more about, more about you. What, what like crucial advice would you have for people because i i don't like seeing people speed running and when they don't see themselves do what they you know hope to achieve or what they see the pros do they get deterred and slow down and stop and eventually let it die out like how do you help that well you know it, it's a very broad question to try to answer i would say uh first off focus and mentality a lot during this interview and I would say to try to push yourself to be more conscientious, conscientious mm -hmm. doing when you're doing your practice runs, when you're practicing tricks, when you're doing runs themselves, uh, just try to have, like, try to understand what, like, what are causing you to make mistakes? Um, why isn't something working as you think it should? And, um, you know, when you notice something happen, explore that. And there's, it took a process for every top level player to get to where that player is. And it's not like they just started out magically amazing. You know, they had to start from ground from uh, square one. Oh, yeah, so definitely. like, you know, for us too, it's been years and years of experimentation and figuring out, Oh man, this habit I have for doing this trick, uh, there's something wrong with it. I need to fiddle with this. And so, um, I know that when you're first learning a game and you're trying to improve and like you're not totally comfortable with things yet, there's like a lot going on. Yeah, you know, I, I would just say to be more open-minded about uh, what's causing things to go wrong. Right on, very good advice. Do you think it's do you think it's a bad mindset to have? Now I'm guilty of this in the early stages of speedrunning. Do you think it's a bad mindset to have to to think? Oh well, there's pros out there and there's tasks. There's nothing left to find in the game. There's there's no point in me exploring the game. Do you think that's a bad mindset? Yeah, I think that's definitely a bad mindset. Yeah, uh, I, I definitely now, used to think that. I am too. Um, I have, like, I put a significant amount of strat finding and routing effort into every game I played at a serious level, but I definitely, um, I definitely am guilty of seeing a particular strat and thinking, oh, like, I, I just take it as, a, as uh, a given that that is, like, the best strat to do. And I don't look for anything better. Like, for example, I talked about in Wiley 4 of my uh, run that we just watched that Prizzy found where you jump up through the fake floor. And that's actually in the task. But I just assumed for many, many years, oh, I mean, the task does it perfectly. There's no way we could save time with it in real time. But yeah. Prizzy finds a setup where you save a second with it in real time. So egg on my face, right? Exactly. I, I regret not putting more time in some of my speed games. Unfortunately, Mario 3, by the time I hit that point, I was I was like, no, I, I want to search for everything. But I'm so guilty for so many other games where it's just like, I really wish I put more time and effort into it. And 
not convince myself, well, the Tassers would have found it. A lot of people think that. Uh, if the Tassers didn't find it, it's not. It's clearly not possible. But a human is the Tass, so like a human <laughs> still has to know the ability to do that. So there's sometimes always random things left to find. Put a lot of time into strat finding for all my games. Like I have a folder for input files, like emulator movies, and I think I have over. 200 input files across all my games just comparing different strats and stuff but like there's only so much of that you can do really so like that's that's where community comes in when you have a lot of people working on one game no one pair of eyes is going to be able to find everything exactly right? and so uh that that's a sort of general advice i'd give for anyone who's struggling to improve um in terms of like when someone is uh, feeling demotivated because of a lack of progress. Yeah. I would say, like, you need to really be with what you want and what you seriously think you are capable of doing. Like, if you're really dragging yourself through the mud to do attempts every day, like, you really don't want to turn on the game and stream. Just, you know, don't do it. It's not required. Yeah. Um, unless it's your, unless it's, unless it's your source of income. But I think, you know, the vast majority are not in that situation. Um, but, you know, you, you don't have to force yourself to do something. It's actually often beneficial to take some time off because for, for a technical reason, because it often um, resets some of your muscle memory. And when you come back to the game, um, you might have a fresh outlook on a trick that you were in a rut with. And when you come back and you sort of regain the muscle memory, uh, you might have a moment where you, um, you either realize what you were doing wrong previously, or it just, like, fixes itself i've had so many times where i like have taken a break and then i come back like for example um you know after the three-year break i said i'm way better at the game now but uh yeah. i can see many parts of the game where i was failing the trick a lot in the past and i came back and i reworked things with a fresh mindset and now i'm just so much more consistent at the entire game <laughs> so it's like a it's like a refresh to the mind did you ever do you ever play any instruments yeah, I played uh, clarinet and I uh, messed with piano and guitar. Uh, like serious, like really seriously. Uh, I played clarinet, like you know, semi seriously in high school. And did you get that experience as well from instruments? Because I I got that a lot. Uh, I I'd say I did. Um, I, I think that I never cared about any of the instruments I played quite as much as I care about speedrunning. So okay, I can talk okay. about speedrunning uh, with more of a, a detailed eye. Yeah, I definitely. Um, since I played uh, drums for a very long time, I did correlate the, the two to be very similar with the break. It's very healthy. I know, I know you want that <laughs> record. I know sometimes people think that not having the record or their run is dragging them down, and the faster you put in attempts, the faster you're going to get it. But sometimes that's not the case. Sometimes you have to sit back, relax, take a night off, refresh. You know, not even exactly. think about it. Ignore it. Just get over it. Right? Just. You know, think about exactly. other things. I mean, it took you, you, you took a three-year break to, to wrap your head around some more healthy, uh, mind-bound things, right? Which is very good. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, I will say one more specific thing. Like, you know, I, I'm going to throw out the generic thing of don't give up. Like, if, if, you're, if you're still, if you still have the fortitude to keep going, just don't give up. But everyone says that. Of course. I, I, the one last concrete piece of advice I would give is to live healthy. Um, I am a much healthier person since three years ago, four years ago, when I was speedrunning seriously. And uh, I eat better, I exercise regularly, and, um, oh, you know, I, I make I sure tell, to I have... I couldn't tell by watching your webcam. <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, <laughs> it shows, man, it you know, shows. I... Thanks, yeah. Uh, well, I had to spend my time doing something while I was taking a break, right? Of course, of course. But no, that's... Anyway, I try to, I, I try to have a clean... Um, focused mindset when I sit down to do attempts, and if you just ate McDonald's before doing runs, you're, you're gonna your body is gonna feel that, and your mind is gonna feel that too. And I, near I like guarantee you, there's a very high chance you're gonna play worse than if you ate like a salad or whatever. Yeah, I'm I'm I eat I eat crap after my runs. I'll have like Wait, there you go. Yeah, I celebrated yesterday with the with a Big Mac. I had to, man. I had to. <laughs> But yeah, no, it's, it's, it's yeah. very true. Like 
mind over matter kind of stuff, you know, go in with a positive mm-hmm. mind, treat your body with health and it will respond in very good ways. But yeah, that's the advice I would give. Um, you know, I've been, I've been doing this for eight years and, uh, I used to be not as good of a speed runner as I am now. So I know all about what improving is like and the, the process of it. Say, if you followed my tips, you will see success. Definitely. Yes, please guys. No tobacco. No, none of that. Yeah. We don't need that crap. Yeah. Right on. Okay. Well, um, there's, there's only, I think a, a couple questions. Number one, obviously is like, clearly people need to know your favorite pizza topping. That has to be. I'm, I'm a, uh, a bog standard pepperoni boy. Yeah. Nothing, nothing too. interesting here. So, so yes. you, if, if somebody orders you a pizza and there's like bacon on it, you're not going to be like, ew, get that out of my face. I'm not eating pizza today. Right? No, I, I'm good with bacon, but a lot of the common pizza toppings like, uh, bell peppers or onions or I don't know if onions are common pizza topping, but like, um, some of the veggie pizza toppings I'm not really down with. I, I actually have never tried pineapple on pizza. I know that. I know that's lurking there. Yeah, I've never not, tried pineapple on pizza. You're not missing um, But I feel like that's just a meme. Like, come on. Yeah. It's it's really... I don't even know how it turned into me. But, like, mushrooms on pizza? I don't like mushrooms on pizza. I don't like that texture. Mushrooms are okay. On my pizza. Mushrooms are okay. I'm, like, some mushrooms in some context. Uh, yeah. Pizza is, like, uh, I'd rather have it off. Exactly. When I order pizza, I'm I'm so content with just pepperoni and cheese. Like it just works. It's like I I can't complain about anything. You know, I don't yeah. need sausage or bacon and stuff like that. I'll have that for breakfast. Yeah. In the same way. <laughs> right on. Well, man, this was a lot of fun and thank you so much for the for the good advice. I hope a lot of speedrunners. I have a couple people um in the Mario 3 community who are really struggling right now with some of the runs and it's their first speed game. And when they get on that PB pace, they, the, the chokes are just so real because the nerves, right? Um, very amateur in the style of speedrunning. So hopefully some of that advice, advice can uh, kind of pour over and, and help a little bit. Awesome. Honestly, you know, I, I would maybe rec- – I don't know how long I talked about the advice thing, but uh, I really believe seriously in the advice I gave. And you might consider highlighting it and uh, letting people watch it in, di- in a di- digestible fashion. Oh, I will, man. We'll we'll network together about the the video and stuff like that. It'll be fun. Very we'll cool. Stuff. Nice. Yeah, we always we always do that fun stuff. Um, but yeah, unless unless you have any other words, I think I think we can wrap it up. That was lots of fun. Uh, I learned oh. a lot. I, there there are some things that I did know. I I don't know if you remember a couple years ago. I used to ask you a lot about uh, how Mega Man Two worked and stuff like that. But I never got the full nitty gritty. Those were just during streams and stuff. So it's uh very nice to hear how. How much stuff is in this game? It, there's so much stuff; it's crazy. Talking about this game, it's it's impossible to describe the exact details of the crazier stuff in the game. But uh, this this is my one true speed gaming passion, and I love spreading it as much as I can. Of course, that's amazing. Well, thanks for thanks for coming on, man. I really appreciate that. Thank you for having me on. I really appreciate inviting me on here. No problem. I, I hope you I hope you had fun. I hope you weren't like, oh, God, Mitch, come on now, stop. No, no, no I, I had a great time. <laughs> I'm just teasing you. Well, anyways, um, yeah, I'll catch you later, and I'll, I'll keep up with you on uh, Discord, and we, we can figure some stuff out later. So thank you very much, man. Right on. Thanks, man. All right, dude. Yeah, take it easy. Yeah, man, he's...